Hey, it's Harker from Play. In this video, we'll add interactions to the card component we created in the last video, which I've linked below, and we'll create a swipeable card stack. Because we want interactions to affect each card on here, every instance, we're gonna add it to the main component. This way we only have to create the interaction once rather than recreating on every single instance. So with the main component selected, let's go into interaction mode. Now, the beauty of having play on your phone and your computer is that you can test things really quickly on your phone while you're making edits on your computer. So this is where we're gonna bring our phone in. On our iOS device with play, I'm gonna to connect to macOS by pressing that button down here. And now whatever I have selected on macOS is going to show on my iPhone. So I have this movie card selected, that's what's showing. If I instead had this full card select, full page selected, I mean, ooh, when I turned off lock selection, now you'll be able to see this. Whatever is selected, that's what's gonna be shown. But as I just actually previewed there, you can also lock the selection. So I wanna have this entire card stack visible at all times. So I'm going to lock the selection. So that's what I'm gonna see on my phone, even when I have something else selected. Now that that's out of the way, let's design this interaction. So we're gonna start with a pan trigger. That's because this swipe gesture where you're moving your finger from one point on your screen to another, that is a pan gesture. So let's add pan. We're gonna make the state changed because we want this to fire as the user is panning their finger, not when they start or stop. And on here, we're gonna add a set property action. We're gonna target self because we want to move, well, we want to adjust whatever property of this whole card component. And the property we wanna do is not width, but instead is offset X, which is basically its position horizontally. Now, I want this to follow my finger. So I'm going to open the expression editor for the value and use a pan trigger here. Sorry, use a trigger property here for the pan trigger. So we're gonna type in pan, which is the trigger, and then period, and this is gonna give us a list of all of the properties associated with that trigger. So we're gonna use the one that's translation X. And you can see this is the horizontal distance of the pan. So basically what this is tracking is from the moment where I start putting my finger down, how far am I moving it to the side? If I'm moving it to the right, it's gonna be a positive value. If I'm moving it to the left, it's gonna be a negative value. So now if we try this on our iOS device, you can see as I pan to the side, it's moving to the right. And if I pan to the left, it's moving to the left. It's just following my finger. So that's one part that we wanna do here. We also wanted to follow our finger in the Y direction. So I'm gonna take this set property action and I'm just gonna duplicate it here. This time, let's change the property from offset X to offset Y. And let's change the value in the expression editor to translation Y. This is the vertical distance. Now you can see I can move this anywhere I want on my screen. Nice. Now we also wanna change the rotation. So I'm going to duplicate this one more time. This time we are going to change the rotation Z. Now let's try this on our iOS device. Now something very funky is happening. We are just moving all around. There's a lot of rotation happening. We want this to rotate between two values. So we're gonna use a function called value between. We will clear the editor or clear the expression editor and then reopen it. And now let's use the value between function. You can see this has four parameters. It takes two numbers, a from value and a to value, a percent, which is any point within that from and to value, and then overshoot, which you can just ignore for now. So this bottom value is gonna be the bottom of our um, rotation range. So let's make this negative eight degrees because we want it to just rotate to negative eight if we're panning to the left. And then we want it to go to eight degrees when we're panning to the right. We want this to follow our finger. So we're gonna use another trigger property. Let's do pan dot translation percent X, and then we can just put in false for overshoot. Now this is not gonna work initially. So I just wanna show you why. Now, when I start panning, you can see it is rotating, but it's starting at that full negative eight value. That's because this pan translation percent X value starts at zero, but we needed to start in the center at 50%. So we're going to add 0.5 to this. Now, when I pan to the side, the right side is rotating right. I come back to the center, <clears throat> it's at zero. And when I pan to the left, it is rotating to the left. So now, no matter where I move this on my screen, you can see it's rotating and it's moving in the X and Y direction. But <clears throat> when I release my finger, it stays there. We want this to either move back to its original position or move off to the side. And also our overlays are not showing here. So we need to put that in as well. 
Let's actually start with those overlays. So that's also gonna have this pan change trigger. We're gonna add a condition here. Let's type in a condition. Basically, we wanna check if we have moved to the right or pan to the right, or if we pan to the left. So let's check here. Let's say if pan dot translation X is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, that means we're panning right, we need to increase the opacity of the positive overlay. So on here, I'm going to add another set property action. This time, instead of targeting self, we're going to target the positive overlay and the property is going to be opacity here. Now we also want this to stay with our uh, pan gesture. So let's use another pan property, trigger property, pan dot translation percent X, again, similar to how we did rotation. And now let's see how that works. Now, as I pan to the side, you can see the green is coming in, but it's not quite fast enough, as fast as I'd like it to be. So let's change this value. Let's just multiply it by 1.5 so it increases that value a little bit. So now as I pan to the right, you can see it brings in that thumb a little bit earlier on. So you can change that value based on what feels best for you. That's one of the beauties of Pi. So if I want to change this to be two instead, so it's even higher opacity, you can play around and see what works best for you. I'll do it at two for now because I kind of like that. Now we need to add in the negative. So I'm gonna take this condition and I'm just gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna drag the second part of the condition into the else block of this first condition. Now for the second part, we're going to check if it is great, uh, sorry, if it's less than zero. So let's just change that from a greater than sign to a less than sign. Now, if that is true, then we want to change the negative overlay basically to this exact same thing but we need to change this to a negative value because remember this translation percent X starts at zero. If you pan left, it's gonna be negative. So we basically just need to multiply this by a negative value so that it's always a positive value in the end. So multiply by negative two, great. And now as I go to the right, perfect and left, right, left, right, left, excellent. But now we still have that problem when we lift our finger up, nothing happens. And we want this either to go up to the side of the page or reset in the middle. So now we're gonna add another trigger in here. This is gonna be a pan ended trigger. This trigger is gonna fire when you lift your finger up. So state will be ended here and direction can stay as any. We're gonna use a condition here as well. So let's go ahead and add that condition. And honestly, to make sure this is a little bit clean so everyone can see, I'm going to select this pan trigger and press return and it's going to collapse everything into it. I can press return again to expand it, but I'm going to keep it collapsed for now so we can really focus on the second part. So on our pan ended trigger, we have this condition and we're basically going to check how far the user has panned in one direction. And if it's greater than a certain value, we're going to send the card off the screen. So we're going to use that same trigger property, the pan dot translation X. And we just want to find a value that um, we want to send this off the page for. So maybe like around right here, which is about like 140. So we're going to say if this is greater than or equal to 140, then we want to send it off the page, our card off the page. So we're going to use another set property action here. Target self whole card property here offset X. And now we just need to use a bigger value, bigger than the screen. So when we release our finger, it's going to move the card fully off the screen to the right. So let's just do like 480 points. I can turn on animate so it moves off. So now let's just test this. As I pan, if I pan, my finger is further than that 140 point, which is probably around here. Now, when I release my finger, it's gonna move off the side of the screen. You can always double tap to restart this. But because this interaction is all on our main component, I can actually test it on this card, and then I could test the same thing on this next card. Cool. Now, if it's false, so this is not true, now we're gonna go into the else section and do something else. We're gonna add another condition here. So actually, I can just take this, duplicate it again, basically the same thing we just did above, drag this second condition into the else section of the first condition. Now we're basically just checking the opposite. So in this first one, we're checking if we've panned this much to the right, the second one, let's check if we've panned this much to the left. 
So I'm gonna change this, instead of being greater than or equal to, we're gonna do less than or equal to negative 140, which is over here somewhere. Now, if that is true, we wanna send the card off to the left. So this will be a negative value, negative 480. Now, the pan to the right or the left and let it go, goes off the screen, pan to the right and let it go, goes off the screen. But if I only pan a little bit, nothing happens. If we only pin a little bit, we want it to come back to the center. So we are going to take the set property action, duplicate it, and move it to this else section here. Now we want to set the value back to zero. So now when I release it, it's going to move it back. But it didn't change the opacities and it didn't change that rotation. So instead of using the set property action, we are actually just going to use a reset, whoop, reset all property action for self. We'll animate that and then we can add a little bit of easing on here. This is gonna change the rotation and the offset X back. So now as I move it, just a little bit, it's gonna move it back. Now we need to decrease the opacity of the positive overlay and negative overlay as well, if we're in this position. I'm gonna add an animate block so these both happen with the same animation settings, and I don't have to set the animation settings twice. For here, let's take this set property action. Uh, let's just add a new set property action. I was feeling lazy. I always like to duplicate my nodes. This time we're going to set the target to be positive overlay, the opacity, and the opacity is going to go back to zero. We don't have any animation settings here because it is following the animate block animation settings. Now I can duplicate this, <laughs> take this command D to duplicate it. This one's going to be the, the negative overlay, opacity, and 0%. Now let's try it on our iOS device. Now I'm moving this around, dragging it. You can see the colors are working. Release it off to the side, release it off to the side, release it in the middle. Now the last thing I wanna add is a haptic. I want this to fire every time I release it. So instead of adding this multiple times somewhere inside this condition chain, we're just gonna add it on the same pan trigger here. Let's do a set haptic action, and then you can choose which one. Again, the beauty of play is these haptics work live, so I can feel them a million times. Success feels good. Error could be cool, or it could go into impact or selection. I'm just gonna do selection for now, so every time I try to move it off the side, it is going to give me a small little haptic feedback. And that is how you create this whole swipeable card interaction. So just to recap what we learned here, in design mode, we learned how to design this card. We had multiple objects inside the card that we have with a low opacity, and we're gonna change that through interactions. Then we turned this all into a component. Then we added it to our page with several other instances of the same component. Then on the main component, we added an interaction. We can expand this again. We added an interaction that moves it left and right changes the rotation and also changes the opacity of the positive and negative overlay. We also added this interaction that when we release our pan gesture, it's going to either move the card off to the side or reset it back in the center and reset all the other properties there as well. So that's how you'll create this common interaction, but you can also use a lot of the things we learned in this video to create other interactions that work better for your product. Again, play is awesome for tweaking all these little values to figure out what works perfectly in your prototype. So thanks so much for joining us on this video. And if you liked it and you liked this style where we go from scratch to a finished product, let us know and we'll create more videos like this.